Well, let me just say that if you're a beginner NES Tetris player, I would 100% not recommend participating in CTWC 2020. You're much better off participating in tournaments where you can find other players of your skill level, such as Classic Tetris Monthly, instead of going up against the best players in the world. CTWC is a professional tournament, and if you're uncomfortable with being watched by thousands of people, then you might not want to participate. But if you're really set on participating in CTWC, and or you know you're good enough to play, then keep watching. First, I'll go over everything you need. Second, I'll go over some information concerning the tournament and what you need to know to participate. And third, I'll show you how you can sign up for CCWC 2020. To play the game, you'll need an original NES, an original NES controller, and a cartridge of NES Tetris. Emulators and Everdrives will not be allowed in CTWC due to the possibility of cheating. If an original NES is out of the question for you, CTWC has approved two clone consoles, the Retron 1 and Retron 1 HD by Hyperkin. The Retron 1 will require a separate controller, and the Retron 1 HD will come with a Hyperkin Cadet, an approved controller for CTWC. Because of that, and a few other reasons, most notably the fact that the HD has two video outputs from the start, I'd recommend getting the HD in most scenarios if you're just getting started with a console setup and don't want to shell out the money for an original NES. While the non-HD one is cheaper, there are some hidden costs, such as the fact that an AV splitter is necessary to capture video, which I'll get into later, and that it doesn't come with a CCWC approved controller. The Retron one is $20 most of the time, however, you'll probably also need to spend an additional $10 to $15 for a controller and AV splitter to capture video. The Retron one HD is $35 on Amazon usually, and comes with two video outputs and a controller out of the box. The cost of an original NES setup varies, but in general, you can get a full setup with a controller and all the necessary cables from $40 to $60 if you know where to look. Usually, Amazon's used listings will have the lowest prices. You'll also need a monitor that can display RF or composite video. Every CRT television and most LCD televisions can do this. However, there is a key reason why you should try your hardest to use a CRT with your NES instead of an LCD. The input lag will be much higher with an LCD. Depending on your LCD, there can be anywhere from 2 to 10 frames more input lag than a CRT. You can fix this problem somewhat with a lagless upscaler such as the RetroTINK 2X Mini, but it costs $70 and you'll still have more input lag than a CRT. And another positive for CRTs is that they are cheap. You can usually find them for free or being sold for only a few dollars. Even a CRT you find on the side of the road will be better for NES Tetris than 99% of LCDs. If you're in America, you can skip this next section where I go over some things that Europeans who want to compete in CTWC should know. I'll put a timestamp on the screen right now. If you're in a PAL region, there are a few things you should know, however, and I'll go over those now. Firstly, it will probably be prohibitively expensive for most Europeans to get their hands on an original NTSC NES due to shipping costs. A PAL NES may be easier to acquire, but due to frame rate differences which effectively makes the game easier, these are not allowed in competitions. The cheapest solution in a PAL region that will be within reach of most people is the Retron 1 HD clone console. It comes with a good quality cadet controller and can play both NTSC and PAL games natively out of the box. Plus, it has two video outputs. Since most regions in Europe are PAL, another issue may be finding a CRT that works with the NTSC video. In general, three things can happen when you plug an NTSC signal into a PAL TV. One, the image will sync and be in color. This is the best possible scenario as it basically means your TV is fully capable of accepting NTSC video. Two, the image will sync but it will be in monochrome. This is another possible scenario but it may make the game harder for you if you rely on recognizing the pieces by color. And three, the image just flat out doesn't sync. Effectively, this means that your TV won't work with NTSC video at all. However, if your TV has a vertical hold control, if you fiddle with that, you may be able to get the picture to sync up. However, you still won't have color. The best path to take is to try to find a CRT that says in the manual that it works with NTSC or 60Hz signals. You can find the manual for most CRTs online using Google. However, if you're buying a CRT physically, which is unlikely considering the current circumstances, but who knows, maybe you're watching this after the virus is cleared up, you can always bring a device that outputs NTSC video along with you. This could be something as obscure as an old camcorder, or if you already have your console, you could even bring that along. When it comes to capturing video, the basics are always the same. You'll always be capturing the composite video signal from your console, unless you have a Restaurant 1 HD, where it may be more cost-effective to capture the video from the HDMI out port. 
there are several community recommended solutions to accomplish this task. The first is to get what is commonly referred to as an easy cap. This is basically the cheapest composite capture card you can get. Video quality from one of these can vary wildly as there are many different types of easy caps, but the most common one records somewhere around 15 frames per second. One of these will run you around $7 to $15. You can also get a higher quality composite capture card such as the GV USB 2. This card captures composite video nearly perfectly and costs around $40 on Amazon when in stock. However, the method that gives you the best bang for the buck is a cheap thumbstick HDMI capture card from eBay paired with an AV2 HDMI upscaler device. Using this, you can get nearly perfect 60 frames per second video, and as a bonus, you can also record from HDMI sources such as computers and more modern game consoles. And the best part about it is that the whole thing only costs around $22. The card itself is around $12 on eBay, and the AV2 HDMI is around $10. And if you have a Retron 1 HD, it already has an HDMI output from the factory, which you can use with the thumbstick HDMI capture card to get 60fps video without an AV2 HDMI. Because of the current circumstances, it's hard to get your hands on a webcam if you don't already have one. However, there's a good chance that you have a camera better than most webcams in your pocket right now. Your smartphone. This comes with the advantage of, of course, not needing to buy a webcam, but depending on how you do it, you may have a lot more lag than a traditional webcam. But it doesn't matter if you use a dedicated webcam or your phone, your audio will still probably sound pretty bad. While you really only need functional audio, good audio is still a very nice thing to have. Having even decent audio can make a huge difference, both in your personal streams and in things like post-game interviews, but if you're absolutely strapped for cash, you can use your webcam's built-in microphone. There are a lot of cheap, good quality microphones, such as the Neewer lapel microphone and the Sony ECM-CS3. These are two entry-level lavalier microphones, with the Neewer being around $10 and the ECM-CS3 being around $20. The best solution if you want good audio is to do your research and find the best thing that will work for you, as everyone's setup is different, but those two mics should be good enough for most people who just want decent audio. However, having good quality audio won't matter if you can't be seen. Lighting yourself is an absolute necessity in CTWC. Generally, if you just want something that works, it can be as simple as repurposing an old household lamp. There are many different types of lights, with some even being purpose-built for the task of lighting up a webcam shot, but for most people, a repurposed lamp will be fine if the room isn't already lit enough. Now, I'll go over some things you should know before participating in CTWC. In order to enter CTWC, you will need to pay the entry fee of $50. This will give you a 2-hour qualifier to get into the top 64. The goal of this qualifier is to get as many max outs as possible, with the highest score below max out being the deciding factor if two players get the same number of max outs. If you make it into the top 64, you will be placed into one of 8 double elimination brackets, each with 8 players. First off, something you need to know is that CTWC is a professional tournament with many viewers. You'll need to take into consideration that you're going to be watched by many, many people. So look around. Do you think this area looks presentable to you? Now. How about this? You might want to tidy up the area where you play. I sometimes play here. In fact, I played here in the May Masters event. Remember that you're on display for thousands of people watching the tournament. This may impact your game if you can't control your nerves, but it's also just good practice to tidy up your appearance for a professional event. You also need to have your face, hands, and controller visible in the webcam shot. Usually placing your webcam on top of your TV can accomplish this just fine, but depending on how close you sit to it, you may need to either move the camera to a different spot or sit further back from your TV. To summarize, in order to stream, you'll need to have a working console setup, a way to capture video from said console setup, a webcam, and a microphone. If you have all that and can pay the $50 entry fee, I'll show you how to sign up. First, you need to go to theccwc.com, link in the description, and you'll need to go to the registration page. If you've already won an approved event for a free entry, however, you'll be sent a separate form by the organizers to fill out. You'll need to fill out everything on this form. While some of the information may be sensitive, CTWC needs most of it from their players in order to run a professional event. If you're under 18, you will also need a parent in order to complete the form. When you reach the end, you'll need to pay the entry fee and will be sent details of how to compete either through your contact email address or Discord. The organizers haven't made this clear yet. Once you're done that, and if you have a proper setup, you should be perfectly set to compete in CTWC. Thanks for watching and Godspeed to you.